What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my next gen career mode. This is episode number 98 and we start today's episode off with a squad report and of course a reminder squad reports are shown at the start of every single in-game calendar month. It's it's weird I, I get comments like on every single episode saying squad report, squad report, when you show in a squad report blah 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 and I, I say it every single time a squad report comes around or at least one in three times at the very minimum. I always say it's at the start of every single calendar month you should know by now but um, even so uh, yeah squad reports are I show it at the start of every single in-game calendar month uh, just because that's just the easiest time for me to do it and as you can see it's it's looking really good obviously right now we're closing out the season uh, we're doing really really well and the score's looking fantastic as well obviously Schurler's long-term injury isn't great but at least we know that with seven games to go if we win our remaining seven games we will be champions because so far we are top of the table by one point ahead of Borussia Dortmund uh, Bayern Munich in third are five points behind and Borussia Mönchengladbach and Gladbach are nine points behind in fourth Dave they've really fallen off the wagon and I did say as well uh, just a few episodes ago now that um, this season was great I mean it really really was we had Bayern Munich, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Dortmund and us all four teams were basically just competing for that top spot for a very very long time but now Borussia Mönchengladbach have fallen away they're not going to win the title let's be honest and even Bayern Munich have slipped up quite a bit so yeah it's a shame that it looks like it's going to be the exact same two teams fighting out again just like last year and the year before that in us and Borussia Dortmund but you know at least, at least, you know, at least we're still on top at the moment. I mean, I'd like to have more teams going for the uh, the first place finish on the last few games because obviously it makes it more exciting, you know. But uh, at least we know that we're at least going to be up there ourselves. At least I've got to stop saying at least. So yeah, that's uh, that's good. But still, uh, we took on Werder Bremen uh, for the first game of today's episode. And as you would have seen by the lineup as well, I rested the entire side. Although I do believe Badstuba started this game, but still we rested the entire side anyway, or most of the side, because we had so many fitness problems but it only took us nine minutes to score the opening goal of the game. Gnabry went down the right hand side and found your shield in the center and it's a really nice header by our backup striker to make it 1-0 and we take the lead just before the 10 minute mark and in 29th minute Werder Bremen get the ball down the left hand side here but Schmitz and Proddle end up giving the ball away here it comes to Yashil he goes through one on one but I tried to chip it over Wolf but unfortunately it's quite a simple save for the big bad Wolf and unfortunately Werder Bremen get the ball away and in the 66th minute another chance here uh, for us as we get the ball forward towards Timo Werner he finds Yashil Yashil offloads it towards the run of Nico Schultz he's got the pace as he turns his man gets himself inside it's a really good chance for a one-on-one -on -one. it's a little bit of a tight angle but I tried to find the far corner but unfortunately went out for a goal kick but it didn't matter because we won the game by a goal to nil and it just goes to show just how strong this squad is we could make 10 changes or possibly 11 to the side and we could still end up winning the game against Werder Bremen here in the Bundesliga so it shows just how strong this squad is I absolutely love it but um, still we won by a goal to nil and of course the reason why we rested the entire side is because we had the second leg of the Champions League quarter-final against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu to play so I thought at the end of the day you know as much as I really want to win the league and we're closing out the league at the moment and of course we've only got well now six games to go uh, we're in the business end it just goes to show you how my interests have completely shifted like seriously I'm only interested in the Champions League right now and of course yeah I do want to win the Bundesliga not gonna lie and of course the German Cup as well but it's surprising just how much my interests have shifted now you know last year the year before that or you know basically any year in any career mode I'd usually be sitting there thinking well even even though I really wanted to win the Champions League, I'll still play some first team players in the league, regardless of what the opponents are, because I, I still want to get the results. But but now I'm sitting here thinking, seriously, if we lose our lead in the league, I don't mind so long as we end up with a Champions League at the end of the season. That's how bad my interests have shift. I've completely changed, and now my my sole focus is the Champions League. I'd love to win the German Cup, I'd love to win the Bundesliga, but now for me, the Champions League is just the holy grail. I have to win it, and that is far superior to any other tournament tournament we are currently in but still we do take on Real Madrid here at the Bernabeu and of course after winning the first leg at the Olympia Stadium by two goals to nil Real Madrid have to score twice here on the night and of course one goal for us would mean they have to score four times so really my plan in this game was go out and attack because yeah we may concede they've got an amazing attack players like Ronaldo and Bale and Rooney but if we get just one goal I can't see them scoring four uh, because of the away goal ruling but still they did hit a post there with Ronaldo and then we went on the counter but Ter Stegen our former goalkeeper made a really good save to the Nyla Soga and from that corner Ginter wins the header but it's headed off the line by Timothy the Russian and unfortunately we can't force it in either so both sides having early attacks here in a very open start at the Bernabeu and another chance fell here in the 36 minutes Kevin Volland collects the ball fake shots around his man and finds Lasoga. Lasoga finds Goretzka here 
Goretzka gets past his man just about, step overs, spots around to Tony Kroos, picks him out, Kroos turns his man, finds Marco Royce who shoots, but again, Ter Stegen makes a good save, quite a simple save, but still has to be made regardless, and it is still 0-0, and that's how the first half would finish, so a few chances for both sides, and in the second half, Real Madrid came out of the blocks flying, Gareth Bale collects the ball and shoots here from a tight angle, but again, Neuer makes the save, so of course, these goalkeepers who switched jerseys back in January, both trying to prove themselves here to the opposite managers, and it was still 0-0, so both of them doing a the job so far, and he see Ronaldo get the ball but as uh, Neuer was beaten William Carvalho clears the ball off the line and keeps it at nil nil so I position my Portuguese holder mid on the line there and thankfully it, uh, it proved to be a fantastic decision really good clearance off the line it's still nil nil and in the 72nd minute Goretzka finds Kevin Volland who shoots but again Ter Stegen makes the save and it's cleared away so our former goalkeeper doing everything he could to uh, keep holding that clean sheet and from the corner I cross it out towards uh, Hummels on the edge of the area he finds Tony Crow he shoots and you know I've said this many many times before sometimes you get luck sometimes you don't and that's why I'm always so calm whenever something happens and I do read your comments as well whenever something happens that looks really really unfortunate and really really bad for us like a really dodgy deflection I'll always be so calm and say well it'll balance out it balance itself out eventually and it does eventually because we get a really fortunate goal there through Tony Crowe takes a huge deflection goes over to, uh, the, the dive of Ter Stegen and it is now 1-0 to to Berlin so Real Madrid will have to score three uh, sorry four goals even in the last few minutes they did get a goal here but it was chalked off for offside as the man who put the ball in the back of the net was miles offside. So it was still 1-0 to her to Berlin. And of course, they knew they knew they were out now. They were never going to score four. They got a deadly attack around Madrid, but they knew they were never going to score four goals in the last few minutes. So it was still 1-0. Ronaldo almost got a goal back for Real Madrid to equalise on the night, but his shot went wide and noise post and out for a goal kick. So still 1-0. And, you know, we knew we were through. So I was absolutely delighted. I really was. I was sitting there in the last few minutes thinking, right, this is fantastic. This is exactly exactly why I rested the entire side uh, on the weekend because I knew the first team could get the job done tonight and they were going to do so but Ter Stegen was still proven to be a real uh, spanner in the works because well not spanner in the works because we were already through but still uh, proven to be a little bit frustrating for us because he kept on making those saves but still it was still 1-0 but in the 90th minute here some nice passing saw Danny De Costa off the bench find Kevin Volland who played it back to our right back he slides it inside and Lasoga makes it 2-0 and finishes the game so Lasoga scores on the ground he spent six months at um, last season was it last season or the season before I think it was the season before actually but um, yeah still we're, we're tuning up now Lasoga seals it we knew we were going through but this, this goal by Lasoga just puts the style on the result it really does and I'm really really pleased it was a really nice goal as well some nice quick passing and a good finish by Lasoga on the penalty spot to make it 2-0 so we are indeed through to the Champions League semi-finals Ramos can't believe it but I'm absolutely delighted about that because it's a really really good result and this this is payback this really is they they beat us in the Champions League final last year, 3 to an extra time. This is payback. We've got our revenge now and Neuer knows that he was right to jump ship in January and come and join us because he knows now that surely, you know, surely uh, we, we, we should get to the final. I mean, we really should now because you look at the teams in there, uh, Napoli and the other two teams at uh, Manchester City and AC Milan, we should be able to get to the final. What, whatever of those three teams get drawn against, we should be able to beat them because even though they are three good sides, you know, Milan, Napoli and Manchester City are all very decent. At the end of the day, we've beaten the strongest side in the world you know they're the, they're the holders and we've got to be fancying our chances now of going all the way if not at least just getting to the final but still I'm very delighted and uh, hopefully we can indeed uh, succeed in our aims to get to uh, the final so we take on Wolfsburg here uh, for the third and final game of today's episode uh, in the Bundesliga so back to league matters and again I'm not too fussed so there was uh, a couple of changes for this game but uh, regardless of such as Dortmund won their game in hand we are now two points points behind them with six games to go and of course after this game there will only be five games to go so even though I'm very pleased at the moment things are looking good in the Champions League I still want to make sure that um, we can get ourselves the results in the league and start to catch up with our rivals Dortmund but still uh, we do take on Wolfsburg who would unfortunately end up taking the lead just before half time very frustrating goal there. Simple ball over the top. The former Chelsea man, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, or De Bruyne, how you pronounce it, the Belgian goes forward and puts it past Neuer and into the back of the net. So unfortunately for us, it is 1-0 to Wolfsburg. And in the second half here, in the 58th minute, Rodriguez gets on the ball, loses out to William Carvalho. We go down the right-hand side. It's a really good opportunity. We chip it through to Lasoga, who shoots, but it's a great save by Fraser Forster, uh, now the Southampton goalkeeper in real life, who makes a very good save and keeps it at 1-0. 
nil. And in its only first minute, Ricardo Rodriguez finds De Bruyne. We make a challenge with Ginter, but it comes back to Rodriguez. I've pulled my captain out of the area, and unfortunately for us, well, Cockerine's header is well saved by Neuer. But as we throw the ball forward here, try and set up a counter attack, I give the ball away with your shield. Luis Gustavo wins it. Junior Milan collects it and finds Kevin De Bruyne. He finds Villarina, and as you can see, I'm dragging my centre backs out needlessly. Bad Stuber got caught out there. I dragged him out for no reason. It causes a bit of panic for us in the centre because there's no one marking up, and unfortunately for us, it's another goal for Wolfsburg, and they make it 2-0. So unfortunately for us, we are going to lose. There's no two ways about it now. We did claim a consolation goal with 12 minutes to go. Bad Stuber got it, but I played really poorly in this game, and that means now with five games to go, we are two points behind Dortmund, who have now reclaimed top spot. So things going well in the Champions League, but a little hiccup here in the Bundesliga. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of my next-gen career mode very soon.